You ready? Are you gonna have a grump face? No. Hey dudes, and welcome to today's vlog. <laughs> All right, let's get Mallory set up to color first things first. Okay, I don't know if you heard that. She said, okay. All right, she's gonna color. In the meanwhile, I am, who is a bump camera? I am going to be wrapping some of our Christmas gifts and so that's why you can't really see the table <laughs> because you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> some of the people watch our vlogs. I am going to be answering some questions and I put out on Instagram and asked if you guys would rather me do the um, just like a regular Q&A or the thing that was the assumptions about me and you guys answered with assumptions about me. So that is what we're gonna do. Well, look, now you can't see my face. Oh dear, I just want the background to not be so... Please ignore my messy kitchen. The other side of the counter is clean. This is the messy side of the counter. <laughs> Mal, that is such a good job. Yeah. Good. Yeah. She's getting another tooth, this bottom one. Next to, she only has two bottom teeth, but her third one is coming in. Okay, so, I don't know how much actual wrapping. Yeah, I don't know how much actual wrapping I'm gonna get done today, but we will go through and answer the assumptions. Oh, 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 don't eat it. Are crayons non-toxic? says non -toxic. No, 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 don't eat it. Here, have a drink. I'm gonna try to whip through these, so if it seems like I'm glossing over anything, that's not my intent. So if you need me to go into any further detail, then that's totally fine. My plan is to just be super open and honest, whatever the question is. The very first one that I got asked is, the assumption is that I am a helicopter parent. I think that's a pretty safe assumption, but yes and no. I think in a lot of ways I am, and in other ways I'm not. I mean, obviously she just ate a crayon. I think given my situation as a whole, then that kind of explains why I would want to be more of a helicopter parent, meaning that I just kind of am standing over her at all times, monitoring her. If there's something where she can get messy, like eating or playing with paints or anything like that, then I'm very much all over her. But I also went 35 years without a child, and so I value my independence, and I really want her to value hers as well. So I do let her have a lot of independent play. I guess I shouldn't say a lot. It's not like I let her be alone all day long by any means. She's never alone, I'm with her, but she enjoys her alone time and I enjoy mine and so we have our alone time together in the same room, but yeah. So if that makes any sense. That was a really long answer, I gotta do this quicker. Many think that all Utahns are LDS, have lots of kids and love Trump. Okay, so let me skip the first one for just a second. Have lots of kids. 
that's a pretty fair assumption for Utah. I don't know the exact statistics, but Tyson and I are definitely in the minority in regards to married people only having one living child. It is definitely more prominent to have many, many children, especially by the time you've been married for 10 years, 11 years like us. Um, and that people love Trump. Utah is dominantly Republican, but I would tell you that before it was narrowed down to Donald Trump, everybody was saying anybody but Trump, but then once Trump became the Republican choice, all the Republicans here were just going with him, not too many of the majority were branching out and looking at other options. I personally did not vote for Trump, I can say that. <laughs> so, and then we had a lot, a lot, a lot. I would say a good third of the th submissions were saying that the assumption is that either we're LDS or everybody in the state of Utah is LDS. LDS is Mormon or Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for short. Technically, Tyson and I are LDS, we were both baptized into the church when we were eight, and we were both raised LDS. However, we neither one of us is, have identified as LDS for at least 10 years now. We don't consider ourselves Mormons. It's just not something we identify with anymore. Uh, the next one, you pick and choose people you want in your life. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. I have a lot of abandonment issues in my life <laughs> due to circumstances in my life. And so if I feel like someone is starting to withdraw from me, then I would just like mentally, like I don't cut them off, but I just mentally am like, okay, we're not, we're not friends anymore. I can distance myself. And sometimes it's bitter feelings just because, especially if it's someone that I thought I was actually going to be really good friends with. But for the most part, I can usually just move on look for someone else. And again, it's just the fear of being abandoned. I choose to abandon before they abandon me. You're not a materialistic person. Simplicity is your thing. Hmm. I think I'm fairly materialistic. I wish I was a minimalist. I do. I so wish. I want to go through this house and trash a good at least half of what we own. Like donate it or trash it. I Then I would just keep buying things. So... <laughs> Uh, it's hard to say. So I would say I'm probably more materialistic. It's a hard word to say. You prefer to stay in and have a good, good home cooked meal slash takeout rather than night out. Absolutely, I would very much be a homebody. I do like to leave the house at least once a day, but I would be perfectly fine if I didn't have to like talk to too many strangers in that amount of time. I assume you're a carefree late. Like it is hard to talk over you. <laughs> I assume you're a carefree, laid-back kind of mama just because Mallory is always happy and smiley. I love that Mallory is happy and carefree. I don't think that I'm carefree, personally. I have a lot of anxieties, and so I wish I was more carefree than I am, but I wouldn't classify myself as carefree. You're really shy and timid, but once you're comfortable, you're so fun to be around. I'm definitely really shy and timid around new people, and then once I'm comfortable, I am I let loose and I'm more myself. Some people, it will take years and years and years for me to become comfortable around, and other people, it just takes a couple of hours, even minutes. But I don't know about fun to be around. <laughs> that is up to each person to decide, but um, I'm definitely more myself. <laughs> once I get to know somebody. I assume that you very rarely have a date night with Tyson. So that is true. Tyson and I, Tyson and I have only been on three dates since we had Mallory and she's 16 months. We go do a lot of things with Mallory, but as far as just things with just me and Tyson, we really rarely do anything like that. We want to, we definitely just need to figure out time and it's really hard to be away from her because we both just like our routine. We like hanging out and being here with her. You feel completely content with your family of four. Absolutely. <laughs> I am very content that you hate clothes shopping for yourself but love to shop for Mallory. Definitely love to shop for Mallory. Um, it depends on where I'm at. Sometimes I like shopping for my own clothes. But um, yeah, it's much, much more fun to shop for Mallory. You wish you didn't live in such an LDS concentrated place. 
Absolutely. And it's nothing against the LDS people or their culture. It's just that we really want Mallory to grow up with diversity and to experience a wide variety of different things. And we feel like that she won't get that here in Utah. So we definitely have plans to move out of the state before she starts school just so she can experience more. You were meant to be a mom. I don't think so. In fact, there was several points in my life that I didn't feel like I was going to be a mom or that I didn't even want to be a mom. But I sure am glad I'm a mom now. What I said is I sure am glad I'm a mom now. <laughs> you put your Christmas tree up in November. Technically, yes, but I refuse to put up my Christmas tree before Thanksgiving is over. You love your subscribers like family. Yes. Absolutely. I know people think that it's impossible to love a lot of people that you've never met, but you guys are our support system. Even if you just watch the video and never interact with us, you are supporting us by simply watching and there's been so many people who were there for us through every bit of grief and every bit of happiness that we've had. And I just consider people like that to be family. Like I feel like I would be unappreciative if I thought of you as anything less. You never lose your cool with Mallory. I absolutely lose my cool with Mallory. Like I said, I was a very independent person for 35 years. And so I'm not used to someone needing me all the time, talking over me with screeches and not just words. I am very anxious, which causes me to erupt. So I don't love that about myself at all. I feel like I have a long way to work on that, but I feel like I also do a fairly decent job at catching myself pretty early on and just walking away or moving on. Socializing with people you don't know well makes you anxious, awkward. Yes, absolutely, we already discussed that. Mallory has made you a more confident person after the loss of Beckett. I don't think so. I don't really put that kind of emotional responsibility on Mallory, so I wouldn't say that my confidence came back because of Mallory. I think that working through my grief in the way that was best for me and putting some time and distance between the initial stages of grief until now, I feel like that has helped bring back some confidence. And obviously having Mallory is very, very helpful, but I don't choose to look at it that way because it's not Mallory's responsibility to help me get through that or change me like that. So I don't really think about it that way. You appreciate how delicate life is after losing Beckett. Absolutely, absolutely. You love your little family more than life? Yes. I am so, so happy for the three of us, the four of us including Beckett, and the six of us including Chloe and Gator. Like, I just have little stages of my family and I love it. You love sweets like me. Ironically, <laughs> contrary to the opening of this vlog, I would prefer savory things. Like, I love to snack on perky jerky, which is like a turkey jerky. <laughs> um, I love string cheese. I love cheese, a lot of cheese. I don't eat sweets as much as it probably seems that I do. In fact, the treats that I made in the opening were for Tyson, because he was saying he didn't have a lot of chocolate. But if you give me like the Cadbury mini eggs or any Cadbury straight out of England, I'm a sucker for that. Based on your personality, you're planning on homeschooling Mallory. Ooh. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. I would go insane and I am not the type of person that would want to pretend that I would even know how to school my child. I mean, I can school her, but I'm I don't I don't also want her to be home taught unless something drastic changes between now and then. I do want her to go to school. I'm not sure about charter, public, private. I have not made any decisions about that, but we have zero plans for homeschooling. I assume that you're too hard on yourself, probably. That you indulge in the occasional alcoholic beverage. Mallory. <laughs> I actually have not had alcohol since the day I found out I was pregnant with Beckett. Yeah, no, no alcohol for me. I just haven't 
wanted in <laughs> that you put up with no BS. It depends. I feel like I'm the type of person that I really don't like to inconvenience a lot of people, so I will sometimes just let things bottle up, and so I'll let things slide, let things slide, let things slide, and then finally I will bottle it up so much that I'll just explode. So, but then there's like my relationship with Tyson. If Ch Tyson and I are giving each other BS, we don't stand for that. In your head, you think that people always think of you as the girl who lost her baby. I actually don't think that. I think that I do a lot of advocating, so I'm sure that most people maybe assume that, but I've never thought that. I think I felt that when I first lost him and suddenly random people from work were friending me on Facebook who never friended me before. Like when I was out on leave and I'm like, okay, so people were talking about me today. And then it was really awkward when I first went back to work. But outside of that, I, I have not really let that cross my mind. I assume that we would be great friends in real life. There's so many of you that I wish I could meet and become friends with in real life. You leave amazing comments and you've just been so unbelievably kind, so I, I would hope so. I assume that you find it harder to stay home with Mallory than you thought. In some ways, I do miss, so this is gonna, this is gonna conflict with what I said earlier. I miss having adult conversations with people I know. I miss having adult friends. So like I don't wanna go just have, <laughs> I don't wanna just like go have a conversation with somebody at the store, although thanks to Mallory, I do have lots of conversations with people at the store. But I, um, I do find that part hard is just not having friends to talk to throughout the day. As far as like having the same routine, I find it, I do think it's harder than I thought. By the end of the day, I'm just spent and done because I've gotten zero breaks. But overall, the hardest day with her is so much better than my best day at work. So, so in that way, it's exactly what I thought it would be. You would have preferred another boy instead of a girl. Actually, I was a little upset when we found out Beckett was a boy. During our whole journey of trying to get pregnant, I always imagined raising a little girl. Tyson and I both wanted a little girl. And then the day we found out it was a boy, I was grumpy for like two minutes, maybe an hour. And then by the next day, I was like, oh! And so I was just like super super excited then when we got pregnant with Mallory I Really didn't I kind of felt like I wanted to go back to having a girl because I just didn't want things to be the same in any way So I actually am really glad that Mallory is a girl. I have to hurry this along because the camera died You were a moody teenager that wanted to be a writer or something like that actually no I well I was a moody teenager because I was but I thought that I was gonna be a doctor specifically a pediatrician. I assume that you had a hard time bonding with Mallory in the beginning because of the fear of losing her. In the beginning of my pregnancy, yes. Just the moment I saw her, it was just such a relief and an instant connection. So during my pregnancy though, I could see where it looked very much like I was disconnected with her and I was very fearful of losing her. I assume that you had a happy childhood. My parents did everything possible to make sure that me and my siblings had everything provided for and I think that my parents did an amazing job trying to you know provide a happy childhood unfortunately you know, outside of their control I did have some childhood trauma and so that unfortunately clouded my childhood but my parents did an amazing job and really tried their very best to make my childhood awesome so Mixed bag. One more. That you're snobby in real life and draw attention to yourself. The person said that they didn't think that, but they feel like others would assume that. Um, even if they thought that. <laughs> I think that's a pretty fair assumption. I think that a lot of shy, more introverted people come across as snobby just because we don't go out of our way to talk to people. We're, you know, it's easy for me to have a weird look on my face when I meet someone and I don't even realize it. And so coming across as snobby, while I wish that I didn't come across like that, I could definitely see how I, I do and how I did. My personality has changed a lot in the last decade. So anyway, but I, I can't argue against that. I definitely see how I would come across as snobby. As far as drawing attention to myself, See, this is where it's so funny because again, I fully recognize where that assumption is gonna come from because I film my life and put it out there for people to look at. But when it comes to being in a crowd, 
I would love nothing more than to just like blend into the wall. You know, if they were to ask me what superpower I want, I wish I could be invisible. <laughs> like, I will always say that. I wish I could be invisible. And it sucks because I know everyone else is having such a fun time and having a, a you know good time doing that. But I just don't like the attention being on me in that way. Hate public speaking, all of that. Well, this video is getting super, super long, so I'm gonna wrap it up because Mallory also maybe will take another nap. But are you showing off your drawing? Can you show off your drawing this way? <gasps> Look how pretty. Good job, Miss Mal, you covered that whole page. Um, anyway, I hope that this pretty much gave you a better idea of me, and I hope that you know that I answered all these super truthfully, and I kind of was expecting a little bit more drama or juiciness to the questions. You guys were really tame about it, but I am down to do this again if you guys want to. So just let me know. If you want to ask questions in the comments, please do. Um, let me know what your assumptions are in the comments. I'm always intrigued to know how I come across to others because because perception is reality and I feel like you can't grow or better yourself if you don't know how you're coming across or what you are like to other people. If you're only in your own little world, then you will never get better. So that's my own personal thought. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. She needs a nap really bad <laughs> so we are going to end the vlog here thank you guys so much for watching i love your bums and we will see boop, you next time <laughs>